back into unrecorded history. We have always believed as human beings that we are so special that we can't even truly die. We somehow go over into another life. But evolution tells us that no one lives after he or she is dead. There is no life after death. If you accept the kind of evolution that's presented in your textbooks, that is, without any trace of design or purpose in it, if you accept that view of evolution, then tell me what you think are, is the baggage that comes along with believing in evolution. I guess you couldn't believe in creation if you had to believe in it. That's right. You could not believe in creation. No. What about life after death? I think evolution teaches us virtually nothing about human morality. We have a lot of biologists who have tried to argue that an understanding of the evolutionary process, particularly of adaptation in social animals, will help us to understand fundamental aspects of human morality. I think this is hopeless and it's false. We humans are just on our own. We're put here by a process that doesn't care about us, and we have to figure out for ourselves how to behave with each other. How, why do you, how do you have morals, or what keeps you... I mean, you seem like a nice guy. I mean... <laughs> yeah, what keeps you from... What the, keeps answer, you from the answer is that my parents brought me up reasonably well. Sometimes they felt they didn't bring me up all that well. And I saw that it was wonderful to do things for other people because it gave me a good feeling inside. Mm -hmm. That's how my parents brought me up. So all we've got to do to have a good society is to bring up kids to enjoy, to get a good selfish pleasure from being kindly and social with other human beings. Richard Dawkins was born on March 26, 1941, of British parents in Kenya. He read zoology at Oxford University, and after two years as an assistant professor at the University of California at Berkeley, he returned to Oxford, where he is now Charles Simani Professor of the Public Understanding of Science and Fellow of New College. I would now ask that you please join me in welcoming and in wishing a happy birthday to Dr. Richard Dawkins. On the eve of the Senate's vote on the anti-evolution bill, Dr. Richard Dawkins is invited to the University of Tennessee. He takes this opportunity to fire across the bows of his traditional foe. Uh, it's a slight feeling of deja vu back to, what was it, 1925? Uh, so I thought I would um, depart a bit from my prepared text and just indulge in a little harmless creationist bashing, if that's all right. <laughs> the Hindus believe that the world is created by churning a cosmic butter churn. Um, there's a tribe of West Africans who believe that the world is created from the excrement of ants. Um, the Jews wrote down their creation myth, um, I think about six or 700 BC, while they were in captivity in Babylon, and they simply took over the local creation myth, which was the Babylonian one, modified it a bit. Um, by some strange historic accident, this particular one of the origin myths, the one that originated from Babylon and was filtered through the Jews, has got into the Christian Bible, and there are people who are brought up to believe that every word in the Christian Bible is true. If they actually thought back to the historical origins of the story in the Christian Bible and realized that it had absolutely no more status than hundreds, thousands of other creation myths all around the world, then they might get it into perspective. As the philosopher Michael Ruse has said, you may think incredibly daft things as part of your religion, but that is your business. But it ceases to be only your business when you impose your views on your unfortunate children to the extent sometimes of removing them from school when evolution is being taught. I think this is a kind of mental child abuse and children need to be protected from mental abuse just as they need to be protected from physical abuse. I don't mean that parents should not be 
allowed to influence their children. Of course, you couldn't stop them, and why should we? I mean that children should be allowed to make up their own minds and should be exposed to all sides of the argument. What I care about is what is true. What is, truth, what is true about the world, what's true about the universe. Um, if it were proved that evolution had uh, very adverse effects on society, say, because it, if it destroys people's religion, and if that makes them then go out and smash shop windows and, and, and rob old ladies and things, which it doesn't, by the way, but it, even if it did, that still wouldn't in any way affect its truth value. We've got to take truth about the world, truth about the universe, separately from whatever consequences, moral or political, they may have. It might not be worth bothering about creationists if they were some kind of pathetic, beleaguered minority, but they're not. Uh, a survey of uh, American college students showed 62% believe Adam and Eve were created by God, 65% believe in Noah's flood, 41% believe that dinosaurs and humans were contemporary, 24% believe that creation occurred in six 24-hour days. Uh, that was students, perhaps even more worrying, similar figures are true of editors of newspapers. Consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder. Thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul. Legislation that would prohibit the teaching of evolution as fact in public schools stalled in the Senate and was taken off notice in the House of Representatives. Senators voted 19 to 13 to send the controversial bill back to the Education Committee as several amendments were offered for debate. Before coming to a final vote, the Tennessee Senate hesitate. They send the anti-evolution bill back to the Education Committee. A wonderful thing in leading the nation here, rather than looking kind of silly. Do you want to sit here by Sanuco? I can sit down or... Tell me what you got. Okay, I'm from Hillsborough High School, and we put together this petition against the anti-evolution bill. And um, these are all students from different ages and different religions and different everything that have signed this petition. Senator Tommy Burks, a pig farmer from East Tennessee, is the author of the bill. Bewildered by the barrage of media coverage over the issue, he takes the stand. You're recognized on Senate Bill 3229. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, all we're saying is the curriculum is there, just teach it as a theory and not as a fact. And uh, 